Hey everybody, it's Chad from Six Blog. So this morning I want to do a video and talk about the um, camera setup that I'm going to be carrying with me on the JMT this summer. Um, I've done a couple of videos in the past kind of talking about it and I wanted to do one more in detail to specifically talk about exactly what I'll be using and uh, show you what changed from earlier on when I was planning on carrying some stuff. So just, just so you know, right off the bat, um, this is the setup that I'm going to be carrying with me. Uh, this is my UltraPod tripod. Uh, this is a Ulanzi ST03 smartphone mount. What's nice about this smartphone mount is it has a hot shoe or a cold shoe adapter on the top. Um, of course, I will be carrying the iPhone 8 Plus and I'm going to be using the Rode Video Micro uh, microphone attached to this setup. So this basically is going to be the setup that I'm using. One other thing or two other things I want to point out that I'm going to be using is going to be the uh, lightning to audio dongle because this is an 8 plus. Anybody that keeps up with the Apple products knows that several generations back uh, they removed the audio jacks and went to just the lightning port only. And this is a SC7 uh, TRRS patch cable uh, that hooks up from the microphone into the dongle and then from the dongle into the phone. So this is the setup that I'm going to be using. Uh, you can kind of see it is just a little bit bulky. So far, this has been my favorite setup. I think that I've tried out, and this is the one I'm settling on. I'm not going to spend any more money, any more time trying to figure out something different. I'm going to go with this, and I think it's going to work pretty good. A uh, couple of things I want to point out. First off, this part of the video inside the house uh, is not going to be run through these, uh, these mics. Uh, the video that I'm going to shoot outside to kind of go and show you how it sounds um, that video will be shot through the mics. Uh, so right now, the or the, the audio, right now all the audio is, is straight through my Lumix GF2 camera. Um, so anyway, what I want to show you first though is this is the setup that I was planning on using. Um, I, I was still using the UltraPod, but this was the setup that I was planning on using. Um, this is the first one I tried out. I tried to make this work and it just didn't work for me the way that I wanted, which is why I ended up going to this. Um, so first off, this is an iPhone 7 Plus. It's my wife's phone, but it's the exact same size as my 8 Plus. I just wanted to, to have this, have both, both phones hooked up with both mics just to kind of give you an idea uh, and show you what I didn't like about it. So first off, the, uh, video micro, uh, the Video Micro and the Video Mic Me uh, mics from Rode are essentially the same mics. Uh, there are a couple of small differences. Basically, it's the housing and the way that they connect. Um, however, the internals, as far as I understand, uh, they're both the same mics. Uh, they're both shotgun mics, which means they kind of focus on what they're pointed at, uh, and they somewhat block out some of the surrounding noises. And, of course, they both have these wind socks, dead cats, whatever you want to call them. They both have these attached. This is the biggest reason that I wanted something else to use rather than just recording straight from my phone, as far as audio is concerned. Um, because this is what I'm hoping is going to block out wind noise. Um, hopefully it will improve the audio quality, but more importantly, I'm looking for it to block the wind. Um, that really aggravates me with, with wind noise. Um, but anyway, so, so this is the first setup I went with. Uh, this is the Video Mic Me. I'm using just a little TRRS. It's a Kiwi Bird adapter that I bought. Uh, this it came two of them. It was like eight bucks on Amazon. And this little cord here is what attaches to the dongle. Now, right off the bat, I don't know if you notice it, but right off the bat, what I don't like is the extreme angle on this cord right here. This is a pretty flimsy cord as far as I'm concerned. The, the dongle, the lightning to audio dongle, it's pretty flimsy. And I don't like that harsh bend in it. I don't feel like it would stand up um, to a lot of use that way. So that was the first thing that kind of put me off to it. Um, other than that, I'm going to go ahead and unplug that just so I don't wear that, that out. Other than that, I didn't exactly like the way that this mic attached to this particular phone because it doesn't have the audio jack. And I'll show you in just a minute what I'm talking about. But as you can see, it is somewhat stable. I mean, it's coming a little loose there. But it is somewhat stable. I did make a little bit of a adapt. I kind of adapted this, and I'll show you that in a minute too. But I really didn't like... Uh, the way that this attached because it wasn't as stable as I wanted it to be. Um, even though, I, like I just showed, I think it is sufficient. But some of the other things I didn't like about it is, first off, this cord coming down, it blocks some of my buttons on the phone. 
besides that, some of the, the windsock here blocks some of the screen, so I'm having a hard time to see. All in all, I just was not really happy with the way that this set up, uh, which is why I went a different route. So real quick, let me just show you. The way that this is attached, show you this side. The way that this is attached is basically it's just kind of compressed on there. So let me take this windsock off. All right, so this is the, this is the mic me from, uh, from Rode. Um, so basically, the way that this attaches is ideally if there was an audio jack on the phone, that would attach into the audio jack. And then this piece here would simply push up. It's a pretty tight fit, so it would push up and it would lock onto the phone. And that actually, I've tried that in some of the, uh, the other phones with audio jacks, and that is a pretty stable setup. I actually like it. However, that's not the case with the, uh, the newer iPhones. Now one thing I did say that I, I kind of adapted this a little bit, this used to have a little bump that came out the front. I actually took a knife and kind of sawed that off because I was trying to, before I could only get it so far because of that bump. So by taking that little bump off, I was able to get it just a little bit farther on the phone to kind of help secure it. And like I showed just a while ago, it, it doesn't do a bad job, but it doesn't do as good of a job as I want it. Now one thing that I want to point out about this this particular mic here before I move on is that since this one has this attachment here it also has an output in the back. What that means is um, I could put my earbuds into this output right here and I could hear everything that was going through this mic so I would know kind of the quality of the feedback um, that I was using. On the, the Rode Video Micro it doesn't have that feature it's only on the mic me so other than actual housing and that, that feature there, along with the way it attaches to the phone, is the only big differences um, with, with these mics. Otherwise, these mics are really nice. Um, I think I'm going to enjoy using them. Um, I just feel like for what I had, that this was not the best option to go with. If I did have a phone that had an audio jack, um, I think the mic me would still be the best bet over maybe even the video micro. So anyway... This is it here. Like I said, the video micro is basically the exact same thing on the inside. Just attaches different, has a slightly different housing, and uh, and that's it. So these are the changes that I made. This is what I will be using. Like I said, um, some of this attaches a little different. One thing I want to point out is first off, um, as you can see, the mic is actually above my phone. So I have complete visibility of my phone. The mic's not covering anything that I'm looking at. I can see it just well, especially if I'm shooting uh, out my back camera. So I don't have anything getting in my way. The cord is even in the back of the phone, so it's not getting in my way. Um, also, what's nice about this cord is it's a little bit longer, um, plus it has this spiral to it. So it kind of gives just a little bit, but at the same time, just because it's so long, it's kind of keeping itself bundled together. So I like that it's kind of space efficient, um, but also it has the ability to be a little bit longer. But what's really nice is it's not putting any harsh stress on this dongle here. Um, it's very loose. It's not really, it's, it's not anything to be concerned about as far as I'm concerned. I will buy another one of these dongles and carry with me though, just in case something were to happen. Also, I want to say that whenever I pick this up, it did not come with this exact dongle or this exact cord. This is actually a um, this is actually a TRS to a TRRS uh, patch cord. So I can't tell you all the details, but from what I've read, basically a TRS is used for things kind of like cameras. If you want to hook a mic up to a camera, um, whereas a TRRS is what uh, a phone, a smartphone. Uh, jack needs and so basically all that is is tip ring sleeve uh, and as far as I understand it's right channel left channel or left channel right channel I can't remember which order and then a ground whereas on a TRRS it's tip ring ring sleeve which is right channel left channel mic and ground so there's one extra channel on the TRRS and that is necessary to use with these microphones uh, so just have to keep in mind whenever um, if you decide to get something like this and you get this cord, and they do make it nice because the black end, you don't have to look at the rings, the black end 
will plug into the video micro mic and the gray end will plug into the phone and that's it. Um, so anyway, this is a, I'm very happy with this setup. One thing too that um, this setup offers that the other one didn't is this mic is actually on a Rycote Lyre shock mount. So it kind of gives the mic a little bit of freedom. Um, whereas with this one, every step I take might get some of that feedback from the bumps and stuff whenever I was using it hooked up to this phone. Um, whereas this one, this shock mount will actually uh, absorb some of that and uh, hopefully uh, you won't hear that noise either. Uh, but anyway, so a couple of ways that I'm planning on using this setup is first off, as I had it just now with the tripod extended and used like so. Uh, another way, if I'm walking, kind of use it like a selfie stick. I can kind of hold onto it like this and point it. Now if I wanted to use the front camera, all I would have to do is switch it over to the front camera. Uh, it's it's going to be fine. I don't have to change that around. Uh, one thing uh, Chris Mead uh, pointed out is I do need to, one thing I do need to make sure that I'm aware of with this, since it's a shotgun mic, if I'm trying to talk to somebody that's behind the mic, it's not going to pick up that audio near as well as it's picking up the audio in front of me. So I need to make sure that I am aware of the direction of the mic and who's speaking. So I may have to come around and talk to somebody over here so that the mic picks us up both. I don't know. That's something I'll have to work with. Like I said, this is not, I may not set it, but this is not a perfect setup. I'm not trying to say it's the best setup. I'm just saying that this is the setup that I've decided to go with. And I do feel pretty confident and, and I'm happy and excited and I'm looking forward to using it. Um, but anyway, so like I said, as a tripod, just holding it in my hand. And another way is I can attach it to my trekking pole because the UltraPod has this Velcro strap. So I can put this strap on here. Now I do want to make sure I get it nice and tight because I don't want the I don't want it to slide on that handle. So then there I have that there. And uh, of course if my trekking pole is extended out, whoops, that part's not locked. But did you see that? It it held on. I hope the camera caught that. But anyway, I can have that out there. As far as my trekking pole will go and, uh, and get that. So what I plan on doing right now is I want to take this setup outside and I want to use it in the uh, three different ways that I just showed you. First off, I want to set up in tripod mode and talk, uh, standing in front of it, walking away from it around the edges. Uh, and then I want to hold it in my hand. And what I'm looking for in holding it in my hand and on my trekking pole is I want to see how much shake there is. I want to see if I see a lot of, first off, movement in the video that's being recorded. Also, I want to see how the mic sounds. So let me get this outside and uh, I'll get that going. Okay, so to start with, I have the camera or my iPhone set up on the uh, tripod. And right now I am recording out the back lens. So I do have the microphone turned around so it's pointing towards me uh, rather than forward. Um, one thing I want to say is this is probably one of the hang-ups with this particular setup. The UltraPod is so low, so small, um, all of my shots as far as using a tripod are probably going to be from a very low standpoint. Um, but anyway, that's not exactly what this is about right now. This is about me capturing my audio. And right now I'm probably about four feet away uh, from the mic. There is a little bit of wind blowing. A leaf just flew in front of me. So uh, right now what I want to do is I want to take a couple of steps back. Uh, there's some good wind right there. Take a couple of steps back and then I want to walk around the camera and see how the audio picks up. So here we go. Alright, so I'm taking a few steps back. Right now I'm probably 12 feet away, uh, maybe 15 feet away. Um, I shouldn't be recording and worrying about audio from this far away but uh, we'll kind of see how it is. So now I'm going to step off to the side a little bit and I'm just going to make a circle. There is a ton of water out here. Um, so I'm having to watch where I step. Also, there is a lot of uh, birds chirping. Um, there's traffic flowing. So there's traffic all around. Right now I'm behind it and I'm going to off to the side. So Now 
come immediately to the side of it. There was a car horn, and I'm back in the front. Let me come a little bit closer, and what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna carry it with just my hand, and I'm looking for that as far as both the audio quality, uh, absorbing some of the steps, uh, as well as um, shakiness of the video. All right, so now I'm walking. Obviously, the uh, camera is shooting again out of the front of the camera, or, or the back camera, I'm sorry, and the microphone is pointed towards me. I don't believe that I can actually change uh, on the fly. I don't believe I can change the cameras on the fly as far as front facing and then rear facing. Um, but anyway, so right now I'm looking for audio quality and I'm looking for um, shakiness. It's like I say, right now I'm holding this thing with just the tripod walking around. Each step I take, I do notice that the microphone is bouncing up and down. So hopefully some of that is actually being absorbed uh, rather than, um, you know, transferred over into the actual sound. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my trekking pole right here now. I'm going to attach it to my trekking pole and uh, I'm going to extend it out and see how that goes. All right, so now I've got the uh, the microphone extended on the, or the whole setup extended on my trekking pole. Um, looking into the field or the, the screen, it does look like it might be a little steadier. I have a feeling that a lot of my shots are probably going to be done similar to this. Uh, right now I am, I do have the pole extended all the way out. Uh, you might be able to see that in that shot with my other camera. Um, Again, I don't know if I said this, all of the audio that's going to be in this portion while I'm outside is actually going through uh, the Rode Video Micro uh, and through my iPhone. Not through my iPhone, but through the Rode Video Micro, which is attached to my iPhone. But anyway, so this is, uh, this is all the way out. And I can bring this in just a little bit closer and I'll probably get a little steadier shot, maybe. I'm holding it with both hands now. It goes Lucy. But anyway, all right. So real quick, what I want to do is I want to uh, I'm gonna stop this and I'm gonna change the video around so that it's front facing. So now I have it front facing. I see one thing. Let's see here. Using the trekking pole like this, it may be a little tough to get me centered uh, because the camera is offset. See a lot of shade on my eyes with a hat. I'll definitely be wearing a hat on the JMT. Right now that's something I'm going back and forth on. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I want to wear just a ball cap style hat or if I want to wear uh, a sun hat. I'm thinking I may go with a sun hat because I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to use my umbrella the way I planned, I don't believe, because I'm going to have my, um, my solar panel on my backpack. So. I can't do that. That's another story. Just trying to talk right now, record some audio. So anyway, that's it guys. I'm gonna leave you um, with shots of me putting each piece uh, of the items that I'm carrying with me on my scale. Just to give you an idea of how much they weigh. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, just post them at the bottom of this video. I'll do my best to get back to you and reply to any of those comments, answer any questions. Also, there will be links to my Amazon affiliate page uh, for all the items except for the iPhone. Um, that you can buy on Amazon.com. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching, and please, uh, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. I'd appreciate that. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video, and I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.